Welcome to the Automators Podcast with your host, Jackie Stook and Joe Glines. So, hey, everybody. So, five tips on how to reduce the amount of personal support. So, that's the topic of today. Hey, it's Jackie from Copenhagen together with Joe from Dallas, Texas. <laughs> <laughs> Great, Joe. So five tips on how to reduce the amount of personal support you have to do. So I'll, I'll take this one and, and start with one where we have this premise of users rarely try to learn anything about your tool, even almost with the best support documentation and stuff like that. They, they are pretty quick to just jump the gun and ask for help. Um, so, so yeah, I, I'd say you can reduce that a lot by going to our first point here and actually creating a, uh, an FAQ, right? Because I've used those a lot on all kinds of different places and even websites where I'm just using the web shop, I might actually check out their FAQ because I'm like, hmm, this is... Is this a good place? How they do do that and instead of actually jumping in and trying to find you know, a chat or whatever? The FAQ might often have the information. So create a good FAQ. And sure enough, if you're just starting out, um, create the question to yourself just to try and, and hit some of those points that you believe people might might get um, caught up on but yeah as time progresses try and actually shift it over to be real questions that you've gotten yeah agreed and, and i think you said a lot of it but just to remind people faq is frequently asked questions and uh spot on jackie like first off let's take the you know the premise which you you said real nicely is people are lazy right and including myself um but I, I think you had brought up a good point on the FAQ side as well, is people can often go there and go, hey, how hard are some of the things when people ask about, you know, can you tell just how much trouble they're having? And if it sounds horrendous, I may not bother at all, you know, like, oh, mercy, this sounds like it's a real headache. I don't want to deal with it. But um, so and since you can control the FAQ, right, um, put, put in the good stuff there. But it will greatly, people are super lazy, but if you direct them to that, It'll at least weed out a lot of the people and a lot of the initial questions. It can save you an amazing amount of time. So it's a great, it's a great one to have, and it's so easy, right? Um, and hopefully you have a way of tracking, you know, the questions, and you can put them in there. And the frequency, you know, the um, start with the most common ones up top. Um, hopefully have a search capability on that, right? And then the, it'll just be a lot easier for people. Um, and of course, this is me, so I'm going to say make videos because. Um, People are lazy, and uh, and I always tell people I, I make videos for everything because no one wants to read anymore, and so people love just watching simple videos, and it's just it's so much easier. So that's a great way to document how to do stuff. Yeah, I, I'd say have videos, but sure, if if it makes sense, have some kind of transcription of the video because mm -hmm. people will be in different situations, and the video can make a lot of sense if you have the option of sitting there and viewing it while you're doing the thing, or if you have a specific issue and there is a video on it, it's great to actually be able to see the solution in action. So so yeah, videos, that's, that's a great one. Um, one of the things that I'm seeing more often now is our third one on the list here, and that's create a bot to do some auto replies and offer up help of different types. So I've seen them in various different ways and some of them are small pop-ups uh, pop on screen uh, and others might be an entire um, email bot or ticketing system that, that tries to um, take you through kind of like an FAQ. If you have questions that it's able to answer, it will try to do so. And that as well can reduce a, quite a bit of load because you will still get those often asked questions, even though you have an FAQ, even though you have videos, those will still come 
and sending people a personal message with the answer will still uh, weed off a good amount of, of that personal time there. I'm sorry, it's gonna do it's gonna do what? It's good. <laughs> anyway, excuse me. So the um the next one we had, which uh, anyway the the uh, I've seen them a lot, especially on Facebook, and I think they're pretty easy to set up nowadays. So yeah, those FA uh, having a bot do auto replies and stuff is a great way to to do that. So um, another one here, point four, is to have a community where people can help each other, right? And it's it's just a great way to to get people excited and to have other people do, you know, like look at how much stuff I do for Jean on QAP, right? Because I love the tool. I love helping people. So I'll, I'll, I'll chime in there. I'll make videos about it and how to help people. So enabling people is, you know, finding ways to, to help them and having a community is a great way to, to do that. I'd say I've had communities around some of my tools as well. And um, most of the time being a, a one man developer, uh, having a community there, um, the ability of a community to be more global uh, and thereby being in more time zones has also helped me greatly because people will often wish for fast help. But you, you simply can't be online 24 seven. Um, so within reason, uh, if you offer up something that's not email alone, but actually have a forum or a chat or whatever type of, of uh, community you want to give people that it can be a great help. So I'd say we have one more here where um, giving rewards or recognition to the people that are helping others. I've seen how well that works just from some of my own communities because I'm grateful for the people who choose to help. So I let them know. And I don't know if they would have kept helping if I didn't do it but I don't see any reason to not let them know that I'm grateful for them doing it, because if that's some kind of incentive for them to keep doing it, that's great for me. Uh, and there's no reason for them to doubt that I'm happy because I've had people be like, oh, oh I wasn't sure if that was okay because blah, blah, blah. Uh, either they're not experts in the tool or whatever it might be, but still the willingness to help is often what's needed in the situation. People that need the help uh, will go a long way to try and follow the instructions of someone who's maybe not a novice, but they don't need to be an expert to actually provide help. No, I, I totally agree. And uh, we, we all, you know, it's part of capitalism in some way, right? You, you, We'll do a lot more when you're getting some sort of a reward for it. It doesn't mean payment, right? It's just some sort of recognition or something. And so by in some way enabling people and rewarding them for what they do, you're much more likely to get some get more people to do it. And so it's just a great way to uh, to get more people to help you out, right? Um, yeah, and these incentives can be very, very small. It can be something as simple as the post count on a, a forum or it can be your placement in the online list in a chat. And it can be all kinds of, it can be a coloration of your online name. It can be all kinds of small uh, things that for the most part only give the person that's doing the help a very small um, recognition. So, yeah. It's one of the reasons me as a boss, anytime I've had people working under me, I always, make sure I, I praise in public and punish in private, right? Like I, I don't say I complain about people out in the general population, but when people do good stuff, I mention them by name, right? And it's just a great way to, to get them to want to do more because it, everyone, it feels good. One, it feels good just when someone who either you report to or whatever does something and they, they compliment you on it. But two, when they're telling other people, it's just, it really makes you want to really try harder. Um, yeah. Now, Jackie, I got one we didn't have on our list here. I was just thinking about it because this is what I do often 
um, when I have any of my tools and people um, want to either report a bug or they're having a problem and it's just, you know, often it's very painful. Um, so the people I know, I'll say, can you record a video and send me a video of what's going on? Because trying to get someone to actually document what the problem is, depending on, if, you know, what language they normally speak and everything else, it can be very problematic. Do you, what, are you, what are your thoughts on that? I'd say I've, I've used it quite extensively myself. I've Often I've asked for screenshots. If, if uh, I start by thinking that, I can determine the issue by simply seeing the placement of different things. And if that doesn't work, um, I might ask for more specific screenshots. And if that still doesn't work or if it doesn't make sense for the person um, needing the help, uh, a recording is very often um, uh, a great way to see either their misstep or where the program is failing or and it can be paused it can be frame by frame it can be all kinds of different things uh, and it can also show you very simple issues that would have been very hard to explain it won't solve all cases but it, it can be a great way of uh, giving support without having those remote login control people remotely type situations. So, right. yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, I hope you all enjoyed that. If you have other one, you know, ideas that you guys like, uh, please add up into the comments. It's really great to hear. Yeah. Yeah. We're great. Yeah, absolutely. It's here. Right. Thanks everyone. Bye. Yeah. Bye. bye. So three, two, one. Hey, it's Jackie from Copenhagen. <laughs> <laughs> totally off. Joe, yeah. uh, one, yeah. one more, hold on.